everyone, my name is Priya Aurora and I'm going into my fourth year of the BBA co-op program in the Goodman School of Business at Brock University. There are a couple different reasons. Uh, the first being the fact that Goodman has an amazing co-op program and they really, really push experiential education. And I knew that I wanted to graduate with a degree that helped me showcase to employers that I had technical skills and that I had knowledge of working in the field. And so with being in a co-op program, as long as I maintain a specific average, I'm guaranteed of being in this program and I graduate with three work terms that showcase the fact that I've worked in this field and that's something that I really, really wanted when I was still applying for schools. Another being that Brock is a smaller school and I knew that moving away from home and you know just starting out post-secondary education, I wanted to be part of a community that supports each other, that builds each other, and you know that's always there for each other. And that's the kind of um, vibe I got when I came to the campus. That's the kind of vibe I got from the professors and from the academic advisors and the students that were gonna go there, you know, the summer before. And so that really, really pushed me to make that choice. I think I knew that I would need the extra help. I would need someone to have my back. And Goodman really has that type of culture. Everyone is there to help each other. Everyone loves being there for each other, supporting each other, whether it's, you know, in case competitions, whether it's in class presentations. That type of culture really pushed me because I knew that no matter what endeavor, I'd have someone to have my back. I wouldn't feel alone. So those were the two big, big reasons of why I knew Goodman was a place for me. Before I begin, I just have to give a huge shout out to the professors. I think the professors are amazing at Goodman. They're always ready to have conversations, no matter whether or not you took a class with them. But in terms of the classes themselves, there's about three aspects of it that I think that are important. The first being the lecture size. So for classes that are a little bit more generic in business, you'd have larger lecture halls and lecture classrooms. So classes like economics or statistics or calculus, those are the classes that you'd have a larger lecture. Typically with these classes, you have a lab or tutorial component attached. So you're able to get a little bit more hands-on experience and you're able to talk to TAs along with 15 or so other students to be able to ask more in-depth questions that you probably you know, didn't get a chance to ask during the lecture itself. The second type of lectures that you would see first or second year would be a little bit more smaller. So these would be classes like management or marketing or accounting. And what I typically notice in these classes is that you'd have cases they'd be cases related to the material that you're learning in class and they'd be a way for you to apply the knowledge and the skills that you're learning in class in terms of the skills that i think that you need to succeed like i mentioned there's different types of lectures there are different types of classes so i think the first first thing that i have to say is to be organized i think that the jump from high school to university can be pretty if you're not organized if you're not ready to set forth what needs to be done when it needs to be done i remember what i did was i got a visual calendar Calendar. and at the beginning of every month I always take an hour or so to myself and I write down all my deadlines I'll write down important dates that way whenever I'm passing by or whenever I'm doing something in my room I know I'm not missing a deadline in terms of studying like I mentioned be organized make sure you write everything down also have a support system there's a lot of people in first year and they're all looking for friends so make sure you try to find people that you know you can study with or people even if you like studying alone people that you know they could have your back so if you miss a class or you need help with an assignment make sure you have a system that you can go to whenever you need help So I think it's something that you'd expect, but you wouldn't expect. Because I find that not a lot of high schools have business classes. I think that they have very, very minimal business classes. They'll have accounting or they'll have economics, but they don't have a lot of the other aspects of business that are equally important. So not a lot of high schools have operations or management or finance. Those are equally as important. So I think that first year, a lot of classes that are related to business, if you took them in grade 12, it's not gonna be a big shocker. Like I remember statistics, calculus or accounting, I took those all in grade 12 and when I took them first year most of the course was a refresher and so it was very easy to learn the new concepts because I wasn't learning a whole lot of material so you know for classes that are more theory based I would say start early because they're gonna have those theories that you're gonna need and I think for classes that are more problem solving based so for instance calculus or finance or accounting I think that I would say start solving those problems early so you're not stuck in exam season when you have five exams in a week and you don't necessarily know how to cover all that material 
I think for in terms of Goodman, the application process isn't the hardest thing. It's very easy. There's no supplementary application. You just have to have a specific grade point average to get in. And I remember for co-op programs, it's always, you know, seven to eight percent higher than non-co-op programs. So for BBA, if they're regular, and this is always tentative, it always changes per year, but let's say the minimum average you need to get into a BBA program is about 80, then the co-op average would be about 85. There's always benchmarks so try to aim for the higher end of whatever program you're applying to in terms of scholarships so brock automatically gives you an entry scholarship if you score over 80 percent so there's benchmarks of about five percent each and you know with each increment the amount of scholarship increases so there's an entry scholarships but there's a lot of scholarships available on like their one app and that's like their scholarship application and so what i would recommend is take some time and actually apply for those scholarships i wish i'd done that a little bit more than i did and there's a lot of scholarships i realize that everyone says that it's not new information but there's a lot of scholarships and if you think that that's something that you can devote a little bit of time to there's no harm in taking some support all right so this is something that i talked about a little bit before but in terms of high school like i mentioned not a lot of high schools have a lot of business courses and that's completely okay you'll realize that applying for business programs they usually just ask for english and they usually ask for math you know two or three depending on the program you're applying to and i remember for goodman i think it was two when i applied so uh, i would really recommend taking the math courses taking whatever math course you can take only because like i mentioned previously the math courses i'd taken in high school when i had to come and take them in university it just made my life so much easier because a lot of that material in university was a refresher and so i didn't have to stress about it too much so i would say take your math courses it's gonna help you throughout your program not just with math based courses but even with courses that have application or case components you know problem solving is very very important in terms of university i think that the hard versus easy courses i think that they depend on who you are because i found people that are stronger in you know the theory side of it and they usually find the calculation based courses harder but i've also seen people who like calculations and they find theory based courses like marketing or hr harder so i think that it depends on who you are as a person i think it depends on your learning style and that's something we can figure out pretty early on like i mentioned so, you know starting first year you get a pretty holistic approach at the courses you're taking not that they're all over the place but you take different types of courses so i think pretty early on you'll realize what your strengths are and i think that that determines what courses you'll find easy versus hard and in terms of course registration i would say start early make sure you plan your schedule in advance plan out the classes that you like plan out what day you guys would like the classes goodman is amazing because they offer classes in 1.5 hour increments and three hour increments and i know that starting september their plan is to offer classes in person asynchronous and synchronous so make sure you plan ahead and make sure you register for your courses as early in the day as possible I think a business degree is pretty common. Goodman has a huge alumni network. But in terms of what you could do with this degree, first of all, I think that you could pursue graduate studies or you could pursue workplace. So if you want to pursue graduate studies, there's a uh, master of commerce programs, there's masters of accounting programs, and there's masters of business administration programs that you could join for, and that could be a jumping point for you after bachelor's, but you could also enter the workforce. And if you're part of a co-op program, you're guaranteed to have three or four work terms where you're learning how to work in a business field and you're learning how to succeed in workplace. Even if you're not part of the co-op program, there's a lot of skills for you to take part in internships or for you to take part in student jobs over the summer or over the school year so there's a lot of opportunities available and even if you decide not to do either of those two like i mentioned goodman is huge on experiential education so classes are going to have components where you're working with companies in toronto or niagara and you're solving problems for them or you're solving cases for them you're still learning skills that you could employ in a workplace and that could help you get the job or that could help you get into the graduate program that you really really want to get into I lived on campus like a lot of students do that go to Brock 
and honestly 100% recommend it was amazing to be part of this community that I knew was going through similar things as me I got to make a lot of friends I got to build my support system and honestly I never felt homesick I knew that if I stepped out of my dorm and if I looked a little bit I'd find people and I'd find people that were nice that wanted to talk to me or so on and so forth so I feel like when you're just transitioning from living away from your parents or from moving away from you know your loved ones it's something that can ease that transition a little bit and so even moving away from campus i decided to live in a student apartment or like a student housing apartment complex thing because i knew that i'd see a lot of students from goodman there and while it's not the same as living on campus it was something that helped me again live away from home and not really feel like i was living away from home in terms of making friends like i mentioned uh, living on campus really helped but if that's not something that you can do i would recommend joining clubs again i know a lot of people say this but that's how i made a lot of friends in my year so if you can't uh, live on campus or if you can't you know if you don't play sports i would recommend joining a club that interests you it doesn't have to be a business club but it could be anything that interests you all right so in terms of diversity i think that niagara region itself is not the most diverse place however brock definitely is i think that there's a lot of different representation groups everywhere i think that a lot of minority groups are represented in a very very positive manner which is something that i really appreciated and i think it's very easy to find people from all over the world and they might not be people that you've attended classes with from first year onwards but brock has an amazing exchange program so there's a lot of students that you might meet in later years i'm from the gta and so it was a little bit of a shift at first seeing the number of minorities simply because of how diverse gta itself is but it was only for a little bit it was something that i got used to very easily simply because I thought it was very easy to find people who were the same level of culture as me and it was very easy to also find people that came from all over the world and so I thought for myself I always felt welcome there and I still do to this day I think that I've never felt like an outsider despite not belonging to the area and so I think that Brock does do a really good job at supporting minorities and welcoming minorities and making them feel like home simply because there's a lot of different groups that go there there's students from all over the world there's no sort of divide between students which i was really happy about you know it's, it's like i mentioned everyone's part of a big community and everyone's there to help you regardless of where you're coming from and regardless of what you bring to the table so financial support one there's a lot of applications that are available for you to sign up for scholarships so this is outside of you know the outside scholarships whatever these are just brock scholarship there's so many scholarships that are available and it's so easy to sign up for them like i mentioned earlier once you reach a specific gpa brock also enrolls you and they give you an entrance scholarship which i thought was also pretty amazing also in terms of the tuition itself brock actually has lower tuition if you're a domestic student in terms of academic support and accommodation i think all the teachers are all the professors sorry they're pretty understanding and there's always medical notes that are available and there's also a lot of academic support available in terms of student tutors ta tutors and i know a lot of professors before their exam or week before the midterm or a day before the midterm even some of them they'll have a group lecture where you can come and there'll be like a review lecture where you can just ask any questions and they'll just go over the material for you so i know that's something that i always always appreciated in terms of <clears throat> mental health support if you're a brock student then you're able to access free therapy sessions with a psychologist brock pays more to chappelle for you and i know i really appreciated that i think that everybody needs mental health help here or there and to be able to access it without having to worry about the financial toll it might take is something that every student should be able to experience in terms of female support or diversity support first of all there's a lot of groups there's a lot of groups that are meant to empower you and there's a lot of groups all over campus where you can just come and discuss your experiences and uh, in terms of insurance and medical benefits if it's something that you don't are already aren't enrolled in brock also offers that you just have to opt in for it and there's a little bit of a fee for it honestly the first thing i would tell myself is to be a little bit more attentive and a little bit more organized right from the beginning i mentioned that i got a visual calendar and the reason that i got it and the reason i started using it so diligently was because I remember two or three weeks in, I I'd forgotten that I had a midterm like at the end of the month, end of September and I was a week away and I hadn't started studying for it and it was because it didn't occur to me that 
university professors wouldn't give the same type of deadline reminders that high school teachers do. So I tell myself to be a little bit more organized, you know, that I have to take care of my own deadlines, that I have to take care of when the assign assignments were due or when a midterm was. So I'd be more organized right from the beginning, but at the same time, this was like first year, first semester, like no harm, no foul. I'd also tell myself to start asking for help a little bit more. I've now realized that, you know, everyone is ready to help you if that's something that you ask for. And I think that first year I could have done that a little bit more. So I could have talked to my professor a little bit more i could have asked my teas for help more or i could have just talked to my peers and you know like ask them if they understand something that i didn't or if they were able to work on an assignment that i haven't yet and you know what they thought of that or they could help me out with it so it seems like a pretty small thing but i think it would have made my life a little bit more easy it would have made things go smoother and I'd also tell myself, like this kind of relates to this, but I tell myself to take care of myself a little bit more. Not that I didn't take self-care days, but I think that I'm a big procrastinator. And so I don't let myself relax when I really need to relax because I'm always still thinking about something that's due. So obviously if I could go back in time, I'd not be a procrastinator. But since I am, I tell myself to relax when I need to relax. And I tell myself to, you know, get started on working when I can get started on working after I've done relaxing since I'm not working right now. Also one thing that everybody actually like misses out on first year is they automatically sign you up for insurance like medical insurance and dental insurance and a lot of people have that with their families so make sure you opt out of it. I remember I did in first year and not that it's like a huge like chunk of money compared to like your tuition but it's still a lot of money so in terms of like hidden fees like that be a little bit more careful not that they're trying to scam you but there might be some things that you don't need. And this also applies to, you know, buying things first year. Everyone's excited to move into a dorm. Everyone's excited to be able to redecorate a space that you're gonna be living for the next year or so. But be careful with, not, not that I'm saying be careful what money you're spending, but be more wise with the stuff that you're buying. If you think that it's something that you're not gonna use, when you have a bigger bed or if it's something that you know you can't use in your current bedroom or your future bedroom then maybe don't buy it you maybe don't need it for you know just eight months but that's what i'd say i just wanted to say a huge huge good luck to everybody i know that a lot of this information can be daunting i know this it can be a lot can be very overwhelming but just know that there's a lot of students that are in a similar boat as you there's a lot of students that have been in a similar boat as you and it all turns out okay i just wanted to remind everyone who's going to goodman to you know remember that this is a big community and if you ask anybody for help they'll be more than happy to help you and i just wanted to say good luck to anybody you know regardless of where you're going and i hope you guys are able to start living a lifestyle and i hope you guys are able to start practicing a lifestyle that you've always wanted to it's a huge step choosing post-secondary and i hope you guys um are happy with your choices Bye bye